In this video, we'll talk about how to analyze the results of a hypothesis test. There are two main ways to be wrong when testing significance. A type 1 error, also called a false positive, is where we reject a true null hypothesis. A type 2 error, also called a false negative, is where we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. I find the terms false positive and false negative much easier to remember, so I'll use those from now on. It may take some time to get them the right way around in your head. The following table gives the probabilities of each of the four possible results of a hypothesis test. If the null hypothesis is true and we don't reject it, that is a true negative. If the null hypothesis is false and we reject it, that is a true positive. Remember, rejecting the null is a positive result, an effect occurs. If the null hypothesis is false and we fail to reject it, that's a false negative. We've said there's no effect when there is. If the null hypothesis is true and we reject it, that's a false positive. We've said there's an effect when there isn't. The cells give the probabilities of each of the four scenarios. Alpha is the significance level we discussed before. The lower alpha, the smaller the probability of a false positive. Beta is the false positive rate, which is generally not possible to calculate, and the quantity 1 minus beta is known as the statistical power. Statistical power refers to the ability of the specific experiment to identify an effect and depends on a number of factors. One factor is the effect size. Statistical tests find it easier to detect large effects. Power depends also on the sample size. In general, statistical tests get more powerful with more data, and we're less likely to miss real effects. Finally, power depends on significance. If we increase the significance threshold, say from 0.01 to 0.05, which increases the chance of rejecting the null, this affects the probability to accept the alternative and hence how easy it is to detect an effect. There is a reciprocal relationship between statistical significance and statistical power. As one goes up, the other goes down. Generally, the effect size is fixed. It's the subject of our study and it can't be changed. The statistical significance level is usually also fixed by the convention of the field at 0.05 or whatever number. This means generally, to increase statistical power, we usually have to gather more data. Let's look at some simple examples to hopefully make all this terminology clearer. Let's say the null hypothesis is that there is no wolf in the valley. The alternative is that there is a wolf in the valley. A false positive means we thought there was a wolf when there wasn't. A false negative means there was, we thought there was no wolf when there was. In the courtroom, the null hypothesis is that the defendant is innocent, and the alternative is that they're guilty. A false positive means we imprison an innocent person. A false negative means we let a guilty person go free. A new drug claims to increase IQ by up to 1%. If we test a group of five people before and after administering the drug. Discounting the potential for the drug to make the IQ go down, we would do a one-tailed test here. Null hypothesis would be something like the IQ difference in the group before and after the drug is less than or equal to zero. The alternative would be that it's greater than zero, that is, there's an effect from the pill. In reality, this experiment is likely to tell us nothing. The sample size is very small, and the effect size is also very small. We say the experiment is underpowered. This means it can't answer the question we wanted to answer. If we can't modify the drug, we need to recruit more test subjects. There's actually a lot of controversy around significance and p-values. See, for example, the reading, scientists rise up against statistical significance. There are several reasons for this. Two of the main ones are that, one, a statistically significant result might not be practically significant, and two, a practice known as p-hacking. To understand the first case, where statistical and practical significance are not the same, imagine two diet pills or weight gain pills, whichever you prefer. Pill P results in a 500 gram weight loss, plus or minus 10 grams, while pill E results in a 5 kilogram weight loss, plus or minus 1 kilogram. If we did an experiment, P would have a much higher statistical significance than E, despite E's much higher effect size. Maximizing precision, or effect, are two different things. High statistical significance means high precision. That is, we're sure there's an effect, so make sure that's what you actually care about. The second case, p-hacking, is also known as phishing, and we discussed it a little in one of our previous videos. Say we accept that alpha equals 0.05 is sufficient for a truly significant result. All we have to do, then, is generate about 20 random pairs of data, and chances are that one of them will be significantly correlated and we can write a paper. In the era of big data and fast computation, it's easy to correlate everything against everything else. Finding a strong association this way does not mean it's not there, but you need to be very careful about interpreting it.